Hello and welcome to today's video. This is a predicted paper two for 2024 June um, A-level Edexcel maths. Here are the topics that are gonna be appearing in paper two. Um, the big ones for me that are just gonna be quite big topics, I think graph transformations, trig identities and equations, uh, partial fractions, I think it's gonna be a part integrating of partial fractions, parametrics, either differentiating or integrating, implicit differentiation, and vectors. Those are the big ones. Um, so this is what you should be revising from. You should be revising these topics individually. I'll link, I've got uh, quite a few videos on these uh, that go a bit more in depth. Uh, so I'll link them as I go along. So please do watch them if you want a bit more in depth detail of what's going on. Um, if you find this video useful, please like and subscribe share it with all your friends, consider donating via Super Thanks, and good luck with your next exam next week. If you're watching this after June 2024, then this is a great unseen paper uh, for you to practice on. Uh, I'll put the PDF uh, in the description uh, so you can access all that uh, with the mark scheme and everything. Uh, let's get straight into it. Okay, proof. So, for some unknown reason, they require you to split these into odd and even. In my opinion, to prove this is true, you don't need to do it, but for the exam board, you do. So let n be even. Uh, so that means 2k is equal to n. So when I substitute that in, I get this. When I expand that bracket, I get 8k cubed plus 12k squared plus 6k plus 1. That's the first bracket expanded minus 8k cubed. When I simplify that, I get 12k squared plus 6k plus 1. So then I can take a 2 out of those first two terms. plus one and this is odd okay so now we're gonna let n be odd so 2k plus one equals n so then I get 2k plus one plus one cubed minus 2k plus one cubed when I expand that I end up getting 8k cubed plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 1 minus 8k, let me put a bracket there, 8k cubed is the same thing as what we just expanded, plus 6k plus 1. So when I simplify that, I end up getting 6k I'm not going to waste your time actually expanding it I'm sure you can all expand brackets um, which is odd you could take a 6 out of this if you wanted to and be left with the 1 um, I wouldn't bother but because I'm pretty sure they're happy for you to assume that that is odd because 6 is times it by 6 will give you even plusing 7 will give you odd and therefore you need a hence odd for all n in n first question done okay parametric equations there was no sight of them so they're almost certainly going to come up okay so also, differentiating trig didn't really come up, so I've combined the two here. So dy dx, so the way you do that with parametric equations is you do dx dt, and you find dy dt, and then you use the chain rule to combine them. Now, when you differentiate uh, tan squared, you get 2 tan t sec squared t, and when you differentiate sine, you get cos. Okay, um, let me just put a line there so it's clear. Now, to get dy by dx, 
using the chain rule, you need to do dy by dt times by dt by dx. So the dt's will cancel and you're left with uh, dy by dx. So this will give me cos t times by 1 over this tan t sec squared t and then are we simplifying this? This is the question. I'm just going to make my pen a little bit thicker. Um, so I can probably cancel some stuff out here. Yeah, I, I'm going to bring the sec squared up to make it sine squared. And I'm going to change the tan into cos, uh, sine over cos. So I'll be left with 2... And then I'm going to make it clear. So sine t over cos t, 1 over cos squared t. So then, if you can hear that, that's my ice machine. If you don't have an ice machine, uh, you should get one. So then I'm left with sine t over cos cubed t. Now I can bring that up to the top. So I'm left with cos 4 over 2 sine t. Okay, that was part A. Part B, find the uh, equation of the tangent where t is equal to that. Give your answer in the form uh, that. Okay, so part B, I'm going to write it over here in red. So part B, when t equals pi over 4, what do you get for x? Well, we just substitute it in for x and y. We want to find out what x and y are. Uh, you end up getting, let me just type in the calculator. Okay, so you get x equals 1. And you get 1 over root 2. Um, which is the same as 2 root 2. Same thing. Okay. So then, using my differential there, my dy dx, this is dy dx, I can substitute it into t as well. Um, that will give me dy by dx. So I'm going to substitute pi over 4 into t here, and I'll get dy dx is root 2 over 8 and then I need the tangent so that's the gradient at that point so then for y equals mx plus c I get y equals root 2 over 8 x plus c and then I can substitute in my coordinates so root 2 over 2 equals root 2 over 8x, no, not x, times 1 plus c. So then you end up getting c is equal to 3 root 2 over 8. So then your final answer is root 2 over 8x plus 3 root 2 over 8. Do they want it in a certain form? Yes. So they want y equals, which we've got. Okay, part C. Find the Cartesian equation of the curve in the form y squared. Is that? Okay. Um, so they're probably going to want us to square y. So y squared is equal to sine squared t. So then... Is that the way they want us to do this? Well... I think that's probably the best way to go. And then I'm going to do x squared as well. So x squared is equal to sine squared t over cos squared t. I've just used the trig identity there. And then I'm going to substitute that into there. So x squared y squared over uh, 1 minus y squared. So then I need to rearrange that to get y equals 
this is part C. I've shoved it in here. I don't know why. I'm sorry. Um, so then I get x squared minus x squared y squared equals y squared y squared plus x squared y squared equals x squared factorize 1 plus x squared equals x squared y squared equals x squared over 1 plus x squared hopefully uh, you followed along there Ah, I've made a mistake. This is not x squared, this is x. So basically I need to change all my x squareds to x and then I am correct. Perfect. Okay, done. Parametric equations. Um, I've got a video on parametric equations. I'll put a little card in the top right. Let's say it's here. Look how smooth that was. This is awkward where I missed it. Um, Implicit differentiation, it didn't show up, it's going to show up. I am going to guarantee it. So you differentiate the x normally. I'm going to leave the product rule for now and I'm going to do it on the side. I'm going to differentiate 4y squared to 8y dy dx. And the 64 gets differentiated to 0. Okay, doing the product rule, let me do it over here. So I need to differentiate 3xy. So let's call 3x u and that. So u is equal to 3x. V is equal to y. u dash is equal to 3. V dash is equal to dy by dx. So let me multiply those two things together. So I end up getting 3x dy dx plus 3y. Make sure you put your brackets, otherwise you're going to make mistakes, I can guarantee it. Um, I need to rearrange this now to get dy dx equals. Oh, I've just made a mistake after telling you guys to put the brackets in. The irony. Okay, I'm going to add everything with the dy dx to the other side. And I'm going to factorize in one step because I'm hardcore like that and then on the other side I would have had 2x minus 3y I'm now going to differentiate that bracket sorry not differentiate I'm going to divide by that bracket 2x minus 3y over 3x plus 8y let me check I've not made a mistake uh, no I'm happy with that so that is dy dx okay now these questions the part b i'm talking about now these part b is always seems simpler than they are uh they're actually quite tricky sometimes uh so 2x minus 3 equals 0 they want dy dx equals 0 by the way um the only way to make this 0 is if the numerator is 0 okay so then I can rearrange this to get y equals, um, so I get 2 over 3x. Now that gives me a bunch of numbers. Um, it gives me something that I can substitute into the original. So that's what I'm going to do. There's the original. So I get x squared minus 3x and then 2 over 3x. And then I get minus 4, 2 over 3x squared plus 64 equals 0. When I simplify that, I end up getting something just in terms of x squared, which is very handy. So I get minus 25 over 9 x squared plus 64 equals 0. And that leads me to x equals 24 over 5 and x equals minus 24 over 5. Now I need to find the y coordinates. Now when I substitute those in to here, into here, um, I end up getting 64 
16 over 5. Make sure you're pairing them up correctly. So when I substituted in 20, positive 25, uh, 24 over 5, I got positive 16 over 5. When I substituted negative 24 over 5 into there, I get negative 16 over 5. And that's your answer. Six marks. That's very generous. Six marks. Okay, question four. The trapezium rule. Okay. So, I need to substitute 1.25 into there first. That's nice and straightforward. So when I do that, square root of 1.25 squared plus 1, I end up getting... Uh, and what do they want it to? Three decimal places. 1.601. One mark. Type it into a calculator. Okay. And then part B, you need to use the trapezium rule, which is given to you in the formula book. Uh, it's not on some exam boards, uh, but it is on Edexcel. And uh, you just simply type it in. Now, how many strips do we have? How many strips do we have? One strip, two strip, three strip, four strip. So we've got four strips. So a half times by 0 0.25, which is the width of the strip, times by 1.414. That's the first value. Plus the last value, plus two times. 1.601 plus the middle ones basically there we go close the curly bracket and when you do all of that and you type it in your calculator you should get an answer of 1.81125 which when you round it to two decimal places is 1.81 okay trapezium rule done okay partial fractions didn't show up will show up um, in paper two I can almost guarantee it so when you oh this is a long question it's split over two pages that's very annoying um, so let me do the partial fractions down below so you're going to get 1 over p 11 is going to equal a over p plus b over 11 minus 2p so you get that when you times by the denominator on the left hand side you're left with 1 equals a 11 minus 2p plus b P because the other two cancel so now I can substitute in values of P um, and I'm going to substitute P equals 0 first that will eliminate the B and I'll end up with A equals or I should say 11A equals 1 so A is equal to 1 over 11 ok now when I substitute in P equals uh, 11 over 2 to cancel out the a term I'm gonna get so that's gonna go to 0 the first one I'm gonna get 1 equals 11 over 2 B so B is equal to 2 over 11 excellent so now when I put that back into my partial fractions I get 1 over 11 P plus 2 over 1 2 1 minus 22p so what they're looking for I love how I've not actually read the question now I'm just into partial fractions that's fine got the answer done okay part B okay model by differential equation gonna need to integrate it yes almost certainly uh, determine the time taken years for the meerkats to double okay so I'm going to separate the variables here. So I'm going to times 
by dt and I'm going to divide by this p over 11 so let me just show you over here and then I'll continue lower down I mean, I've just written out the question again, which is quite annoying, right? 22p, 11 minus 2p. Okay, so I'm going to times by dt, divide by p, the bracket. So I'm left with 1 over p, 11, that. I should write dp, equals 1 dt. And then I'm going to integrate both sides. Okay, now I've just split that into partial fractions, that left-hand side, so I'm probably going to use that. Okay, so when I... Ah, oh, they've put the 22... Where did the 22 go? Ah, uh, times 22 on this side. That's probably going to help us. 22 on this side. And I'm going to take it out of the front of the partial fraction. So, draw a line there. I'm going to change colour. Why not? Okay, so now, just so we clarify, I'm going to integrate... Uh, I'm going to take the 22 out the front. 1 over... Let me, let me, let me do this. 1 over 11p plus the integral of 2 over 121 minus 22p is equal to the integral of 1 dt. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm going to integrate it now. So this is t plus c, the right hand side. Left hand side is going to give me uh, 2 ln p minus 2 ln 11p minus 2p. You don't need another plus c. They combine, not needed. Okay, now what am I trying to do? Given that there are a thousand meerkats in the population when the study began. Okay, so... Is it per thousand? Uh, yes, in the thousands. P in its thousands. Okay, so I need to substitute in T equals zero, P equals one, to find out C. That disappears. That disappears, so I get minus 2 ln 9 equals C. So, um, what other information have they given me? Find the, oh, I need to find out when it doubles. So I need to substitute in P equals 2 into my equation. When I do that, I get T equals 2 ln 2 plus 2 ln 9 minus 2 ln 7, which is equal to 1.89 years. Okay, part C. Show that P is equal to that. Okay, where A, B, and C need to be found. Fine. So... Let me continue. I'm going to change colour again. I'm going to change it back to purple. So 2 ln p minus 2 ln 11 minus 2p equals t minus 2 ln 9. So I need to somehow make this, what do they want? t equals p equals. So they want this to be p equals. You're probably thinking how am I going to get this to p equals? Well, the first things first, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. That's probably going to help. So I'm going to get ln p minus ln 11 minus 2p equals a half t minus ln 9. Do I want ln 9 on the other side? Uh, I think I do. I think I do. Perfect. Okay. Equals a half t. Now I'm going to get ln and I'm going to combine the 9s for the 9p. So I'm going to get 9p minus this using our ln or log laws. 
I'm allowed to combine that one because uh, I'm doing bid maths, right? So then I'm going to be left with, and now using the subtraction rule, I'm going to turn it into a fraction. And now I'm going to raise everything to the power of e. So I get e uh, to the power of the ln, which just cancels it out. I'm not going to write it out. Uh, so I get 9p over 11 minus 2p equals e to the half t. So then I'm going to multiply the denominator across. So I get 9p equals e to the half t or 11 and then minus 2p e to the a half t. Now I need to make this p equal so I'm going to plus this to the other side. So I get 9p plus 2p e to the half t equals 11 e to the half t. Factorize out P. Okay. Then I'm going to divide by that. And I'm slightly scared because I haven't got what they have asked for. But is there a way to do that? Uh, hang on, let's have a look. What do they actually want? That's ah, minus. <laughs> okay, so we're going to divide top and bottom by e to the half t. A little bit of finesse needed. So that's 11. That second term is going to be 2. And that's going to give me e to the minus a half t. So I got what they wanted. Lovely. Okay, next question. That's a lot of work for three marks. Okay. Numero six. Okay, lovely. Company which is making 200 mobile phones each week uh, plans to increase its production. The number of mobile phones produced is to be increased by 20 each week uh, from 200 in week 1 to 220. Okay, okay, until it reaches 600 in week n. Find the value of n. So, arithmetic series didn't show up. Geometric series showed up, but not... Um, arithmetic so we better just check so 600 is equal to 200 which is a plus n minus 1 and the common difference is 20 so we're just using uh, un equals a plus n minus 1 d that is the formula we're using here um, so we need to solve this for n I'm not going to insult your intelligence. You can do that. N equals 21. Okay. Part B. Plans to make uh, 600 phones each week. Okay. Find the total number of phones that will be made in the first 52 weeks. Starting from week one. Okay. So we need to split it up from the first 21 to the second 21. Uh, not 21. Whatever 52 minus 21 is. 31. Okay, so we need to do the first 21 and then we need to add up 600 times um, 21. So let's do that now. So 600. So after week 21, we're going to get this many, which is 18,600. Now we need to find the first, the sum of the first 21. Uh, weeks okay so we're using sn equals n over 2 etc etc so 21 over 2 uh, 2 times 200 plus 20 times 20 times by oh no that's it 
that's it that's all we need i've already done it so sn is equal to and when i get that uh i should get eight thousand four hundred so adding these two things together i get twenty seven thousand let me just double check my maths because i typed it in pretty quickly yes great excellent done if you made it this far in the video and it's helping you out a lot uh, please consider donating via super thanks or like and subscribe share it with your friends uh, I'm sure they would appreciate it. Okay, trig identities, none of them showed up. You need to know how to do these. If you don't, you need to learn. Okay, show that this is this. Um, now, this is scary. It's irrelevant for now. It's irrelevant. Don't let it psych you out. So I need to make the I need to take the left hand side and make it look like the right hand side. So tan is sine over cos. Cot is cos over sine. Cross multiply. Hopefully you're all happy with that. I've added, I've cross multiplied. That's what you should do. This numerator is 1. We're going to use the double angle formula, which is given to you. And that is the same as that. If you're not confident on that, you need to brush up on the double angle formulas and remember the formulas. I do have a video which I'll link here. I've nailed it again. You can't believe it. Okay. That is the same as 2 cosec 2 theta. Which is what they wanted. Brilliant. Four marks. Easy. Hence explain why the equation that equals one does not have any real solutions. So why does this equals one not have any solutions? Well, let's have a look. Let's break it down. Equals a half. Okay. Well, that's one over sine two theta equals a half. Okay, let me times that up. So I would need sine 2 theta to equal 2, which does not exist. Does not exist. Um, and therefore, no real solutions. Perfect. As, you should probably say this, as minus 1 and 1. Okay, brilliant. Next question. We're flying through them now. Oh, I say that and we're... Why have I done this to you guys? I'm sorry. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help. Okay, question numero eight. Okay. We've got this. We've got x equals dy dx. Uh, find the dy dx. Okay, fine. So I'm going to find dx dy... and then flip it. Okay, so when I do that, I get A out the front, not sine, cos 2y. I'm then gonna flip it to get dy dx. So I get uh, an eighth, I mean, uh, let's write it as cos over 2y. Let's keep it like that. Okay, done. Uh, no, not done. At the origin. So I need to substitute in 0, 0. Or 0. Okay. Um, cos 0 is 1. So dy dx is equal to an eighth at the origin. Okay. Use small angle approximation for sine 2y to find the equation linking y okay close to the origin so small angle approximation b i so 
is approximately equal to 2y. So therefore, when y is small, x is approximately equal to 8y. Brilliant. That's part i. Let me just make this clear. Okay, i, i. Explain the relationship between the answers to A and B, I. Uh, okay. Uh, the value found in A is the gradient of the line found in B, I. Yes, because if I divided both sides by 8, I would get an 8th x equals y. So I found the gradient in A for line in BI. Okay, part C. Show that for all points x, y lying on C, dy, dx is equal to that. Okay, so basically I've got dy, dx in terms of y. They want it in terms of x. So I need to find a way to do this. Tricky. Tricky for three marks as well. Okay. Mm, okay, so I've got dy dx equals 1 over 8 times by 1 over cos 2y. So, sine squared 2y plus cos squared 2y is equal to 1. So, cos squared 2y is equal to 1 minus sine squared 2y. So, cos 2y to the square root of 1 minus sine squared 2y. I want it in sine squared. I want it in sine 2y because I've got this here, which will help me. Okay, so I can now substitute that into there. So dy by dx. Hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, okay. 1 over 8 times by 1 over the square root of 1 minus sine squared 2y. Now, what does sine squared 2y equal? That's the question. Well, if x equals 4 sine 2y, then x over 4 equals sine 2y. So x squared over 16 equals sine squared 2y. Substitute that into here, dy dx is equal to 1 over 8 times by the square root of 1 minus x squared over 16. Now I can guarantee that's not the form they were looking for it. No, so I need to tidy this up a bit. How am I going to do that? Well, that's a good question. Well, I've got the 8 out the front already. So then when I simplify that, I can bring the, I can change this A into, hang on, there's my ice machine again, into 4 times 2, which is, oh, this is horrible. There's no way you would think of this on your own over 16, all over 1. So I can take that root 16 in. Oh, that is horrible. Um, so I get 16 minus x squared, which is the final answer. Gross. Okay. Done all that? Yeah, it's fine. Small angle approximations again. Excellent. 
So, that is the same as 4 theta over 2, approximately. That is approximately 1 minus uh, that squared with a 3 out the front. And now I just need to tidy it up. So that gives me 2 theta. Wow. That gives me uh, probably something horrible. Oh, let me just do it. Uh, 1 minus that plus that over 4. So I get 2 theta plus 3 minus 3 theta squared plus 3 over 4 theta 4. Integers. They want integers. Excellent. Why do I have a theta squared to the 4? That's my question. That is my question. Am I missing something? Ah, you can ignore the theta to the 4 because it's assumed that it's small. So it is 3 plus 2 theta minus 3 theta squared. So you might want to write a little note, ignore theta to the 4 as theta is small. So theta to the 4 is negligible. Okay. Question 10. Okay. So we need to do transformations. Nine marks. Wow. Okay. Are we sketching? Oh, we're actually sketching. Here we go. So what does this do? This flips it in the x-axis and then moves it up one. So what's that going to look like? It's going to flip it like that and then it's going to move it up one. Wait, no, hang on. I just did the opposite of what I said. It's going to flip it in the y-axis. So I'm going to get that on this side and that on this side. And then it's going to move up one. Okay, so then this point is going to be... Hang on, what do they want? They want to know ah, where it crosses. So that's going to be two. That's going to be two. And this point is now minus... It's moved up one, so it's minus two, four. Excellent. Nice and easy. That's part I. I, I. Uh, okay, so we're going to move it left two and then up three. That's nice and easy. Let me get rid of this one. Oh, is that easy? Left two. Our left two makes it. It does make it easy. Okay. It's going to say, how do we know what the y-intercept is? So it's going to be like this. And the maximum point and the y-intercept are going to be the same point. It's going to be 0, 6. Because I've moved it left 2, which makes the x-coordinate 0. And up 3 makes the y-coordinate 6. Excellent. Uh, I, I. Triple I, sorry. Okay. Uh, so stretch in both directions by two and a half. Okay, uh, this is probably the hardest one I would suggest. So it's going to look like, no, that's rubbish. It's going to look like this. Okay, so I need to it's going to be two. It's going to go through at two. Because the only thing that affects the y coordinate is the two out the front. So I need to times the y coordinate by two. Excellent. My minimum point is going to be one six. Because I need to halve the x coordinate and double 
the y coordinate excellent done easy transformations okay just a simple logs uh question uh i think it's going to come up they, they didn't really show up so you get this in a double bracket using your log laws let me just make it clear and then i'm going to bring the two up to make it x plus one squared so then i can now get rid of the learns and they are equal i'm going to expand this at the same time uh when i expand that what do i get uh i get 6x squared minus 30x plus 36 Taking it all to one side, 5x squared minus 32x plus 35 equals 1. So then I'm going to get two answers. So I get x equals 5, x equals 7 over 5. Probably need to show detailed reasoning at that point. You'd type it into the formula uh, or factorize. Um, I can ignore this one because it says x is between minus 1 and 2 so I can write x equals 7 over 5 as my sole answer okay part b 2 to the x 3 to the x Hang on, what is it? 3 to the 3x, sorry, completely wrong. e to the 3x plus 1 equals 10. Learn both sides. I can split this up, so I get learn 2, and I'm going to bring the x down to the front. I can add them. Uh, and this just gets this because the ln e um, is just 1 equals ln 10. What I'm just trying to do here. Give your answer to part B. Our integers. Am I solving? Ah, yes, yeah, solving. Okay, great. So I... I'm going to factorize an x out. So I get ln 2 plus 3 equals ln 10 minus 1 over ln 2 plus 3. Is that what they're looking for? Yeah, the other way around. So that equals minus 1 plus ln 10 over 3 plus ln 2. Okay, done. Okay, vectors. Uh, again, vectors didn't show up, so I can almost guarantee that they will. Uh, I'm going to write them in column vector form because uh, I just prefer it so much more. But you do whatever you want to do. Okay, column vector form. Okay, so because they're in a straight line, that means they need to be parallel. So I need to do B minus A to find AB. And that will be parallel to BC. So I also need to find BC, which is C minus A. Okay, so AB is equal to minus 4, 7, uh, B minus A, 1. Okay, and then BC is, I've written completely the wrong thing here. Um, it is C minus B. 
Okay, uh, C minus B, I get minus 16, P minus 4, and 4 as the column vector. Now, the multiple is 4, so the lambda is equal to 4 because they're on a straight line, they've got to be multiples of each other. So 7 times 4 is equal to P minus 4, so P is equal to 32. Uh, the line segment OB is extended to point D, so that CD is parallel to OA. Okay. So OD, OD is equal to mu OB because it is extended, therefore it is parallel. So if I write that, uh, it's four, four mu, zero, six mu. I'm gonna write it as a column vector. Um, okay, so now that I've done that, if I write what CD is, Well, CD is uh, 16i, this is coming from C, right, plus 4 mu minus 32, which is P. So then that's the J in brackets. And then for K, it is 6 mu minus 10. Is that right? 10? Yeah, 10. And that's K. Okay. So, knowing that these two things are multiples of each other, let me write it in column vector form. is equal to but it also means it's parallel to OB right so OB is 0 oh that's not a good sign oh no sorry so that CD is to OA so let me write that down OA is 4 minus 3, 5. Yeah. So now the fact that these are parallel is times by 4. So that means 4 mu minus 32 is equal to minus 12. So then I get minus 12 plus 32, so that means mu is equal to 5. Let me check that it works on the other one. So, yes, it does, because I get 6 times 5 minus 10, which is 20, which is equal to 4 times 5. So that works. Okay, what am I actually trying to do? Find OD. So then I need to times this. Well, mu is 5, so I'll just substitute it into... into um, into here, so OD is equal to 0, 20, 30. But they want the, they want the magnitude. So that is uh, the square root of 20 squared plus 30 squared, which is so let me write this down. So it's square root of 20 squared plus 30 squared, which is 10 root 13. That's your answer. Okay, last question. Circles. There wasn't many circles. Um, in fact, I don't think there was any. 
in paper one. So they're almost certainly going to come up. Okay, uh, center seven eight. Okay, uh, and ten thirteen. Now, before I even read the question, I know that that is a right angle. That is probably going to be useful at some point. Find the length PQ. Okay, well, I can do that. So 10 minus 7 squared plus 13 minus 8 squared. All square rooted is the length of PQ, which is equal to root 34. Excellent. Okay. Um, hence, write down the equation uh, for C. Okay. Well, it's x minus 7 squared plus y minus 8 squared equals 34. Because this is the radius. So the radius squared is 34. So that's what goes on the right hand side. Uh, the line L is a tangent to C at point Q, shown in figure 2. Find the equation of L in that form. Okay, so like I said, uh, it's perpendicular. So let's find the gradient between P and Q. So Y2 minus Y1. So that is 13 minus 8 over 10 minus 3. So that is 5 over 7. So then gradient of L is equal to negative 7 over 5. Uh, which sorry, that's that's not 3. I've made a mistake. That's 7. And therefore that's 3. And therefore that is negative 3 over 5. Okay, y equals minus 3 over 5 x plus c. Now I need to substitute in a point on the line which is q. q is on that line. So uh, 13 equals negative 3 over 5 times 10 plus c. So C is equal to uh, so that's going to give you negative six plus nineteen. So then Y is equal to minus three over five X plus nineteen times both sides by five. Add the three X to the other side. 19 times 5 is 95 equals 0. And that's your answer. If you made it to this point in the video, thanks for watching. Good luck in your exam next week. Um, like and subscribe. Share it with your friends. Until next time, bye.